Hi there, this is Stephen Rosell, and I'm going to do a quick overview of the changes and updates in Layout Tools 2012. So first of all, 2012 is primarily, or rather Layout Tools 2012 is primarily a UI focused release. Um, and I want to say up front, I apologize for not getting this out sooner. Um, I intended to get it out months ago, but there were some major obstacles as far as uh, changes in the UI between my 2011 and 2012, um, specifically just some some lower level changes to some Mel GUI commands, and basically necessitated a complete redesign of the layout tools UI, which was not fun and took me forever, but uh, I finally got it done. Um, so now basically it's not going to look all that different. Uh, now the UI is uh, basically adapted to to alleviate those problems. Um, one kind of change along the way is that now um, the sliders that are used are scalable. So now when you scale your sliders you actually have much more uh, precision. So if you wanted to adjust something like clipping plane you have a much wider range of precision essentially. Um, so that's kind of a nice little uh, um, side benefit and then also I've gone in and I've made a lot of annotations so I've inserted annotations and I've also extended kind of the naming conventions of the various buttons uh, the original names were very short and concise due to previous kind of resolution limitations but now that everybody has nice big monitors I have a little more space to work with so there were some some little side effects or little benefits from switching over the UI but now this time I'll go over some of the new features and those are mostly related to importing assets. So first thing is uh, there have been quite a few bug fixes. There was a path bug that prevented me from, or uh, prevented anyone from storing paths correctly. Um, so when you did a search path, for instance, um, if I'm searching for my icons here, when you did a search path, it would actually incorrectly store the path and you would get errors as a result. So that's been fixed for both the set search path and for the store path and prefix to shelf um, buttons. So now the paths are correct. But additionally, we've also gone in and made some changes um, to the way icons are generated. So in the last release, I updated it so that we could have different size displays. So if you wanted to view very small icons or medium sized icons or up to very large icons, you can switch those. We've also updated the background color. So now, uh, depending on the icon that you're working with, you can switch between dark and medium and light, and that will basically update the, the icon display accordingly. It doesn't actually re-render the icons. The icons actually have transparency built into them, so all this does is it just sets a global setting for the background color. So that if you have dark icons, you can set it to a light background. If you have light icons, you can set it to a, a dark background. Some other things that have changed. Uh, one is, and this was a bug as well, if you bring in an object here, um, if you start to drag that around, you can see that if I just click drag in place, um, I can just drop this object into place. But there's a bug in 2012 that prevents you from interactively dragging until you explicitly go in and trigger viewport 2.0. And again, this is a limitation of Maya, so there's nothing I can do about it. Um, all you have to do is just turn on viewport 2.0 and then once you do that, then this becomes interactive. So you only have to do that once. You can actually turn it on and then just turn it right back off and then it will become interactive again. Now when I bring in a new prop, I can basically interactively drag that around in my scene. And I'm not going to have that problem again until I restart Maya. So anytime you restart Maya, just remember if you're using layout tools, just to quickly go in and just uh, trigger viewport 2.0, that will basically allow you to interactively drag your props into place. Simple little change. So another uh, bug fix is the ability to basically set your ground plane, which was broken in the past release. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. So if I bring in this box here, you can see I'm dragging it along the ground plane. If I use my V key, I can snap that to, say, the corner of this other box, and now that becomes my ground plane. So you can see here that I'm actually dragging it around on top. It's not actually conforming to the surface. It's just using a virtual ground plane. So what I can do is I can set any point to be a, a virtual ground plane. So let's say, for instance, I, I bring in this column. As soon as I bring that in, it remembers the most recent ground plane. And now that becomes my new ground plane. Let's actually scale this guy up a little bit. 
And let's say that I wanted the top of this to be a ground plane instead. I can actually grab that face. I can come in here under initial ground, just say set ground. That will redefine my ground plane so that now when I bring in another object, let's say this fire post, now that becomes my new virtual ground plane. I can also set this by changing the vertical placement with the drag tool. I've modified this a bit as well. So if you hold the control key, you can change the vertical placement of your object. And if you use your middle mouse button, so if you use your left mouse button, it's, it's moving along the ground plane. If you use your middle mouse button, it changes the, the vertical placement. And then that becomes my new ground plane. Now, if I were to bring in another one of these, actually didn't do that quite right. There we go. Now, if I bring in another one of these, that, that same place that I, uh, that I left off will, will still be my virtual ground plane. So again, that can be set in a number of ways just by snapping to a specific point or it could be set by vertically changing your position, or it could be set by going in here and setting an explicit value or setting to a specific object and or component. Uh, and this is uh, this could be a vertex or edge or whatever. So I could grab that vert and make that my ground plane if I wanted to. Um, and again, that just extends out infinitely from that point. So another kind of uh, long requested change that I've made is the addition of options for the icon render. So if you choose the Maya render, I believe that's still the default actually. That would basically mean that if you go in here and control click on any one of these icons, then it's going to load that object and it's automatically going to render an icon for that object. Um, now if I were to go in and reposition this and say re-render, it's going to generate a new icon. You'll see it updating right here. So now I can set this to any of my renderers. So I can set this to mental ray. Now when I render, it's actually going to use metal ray. That's very subtle, but you'll notice there's a little bit of a lighting difference. That's just the difference in the renderer. I can use the old hardware renderer, which is the legacy hardware renderer, um, which is faster than metal ray, obviously. But if you want to include things like normal maps and bump maps and, uh, and ambient uh, AO maps or light maps and things like that, you can also use VP2 now. So Viewport 2.0 is, of course, the new Viewport renderer, and that is batchable. So I'm taking advantage of that to render the icons. Now, the cool thing about the Viewport 2.0 render is that it also allows you to render things like wireframes. So if I select the object, for instance, and I re-render this, you'll notice it includes the wireframe in the render. If I were to go in and say, for instance, isolate some components here, it will include those components in the render. And then additionally, if I were to go in and let's say, for instance, include other things like uh, a camera for instance I'll just drop in a camera and say scale this up I'll put this camera in my scene and just say that I I need to use that as kind of a stand-in icon or something like that now when I go in and re-render it's going to also include the camera so that includes things like uh, locators and things like joints so you could use this actually to store skeletons for instance and it would uh, take snapshots of the skeleton uh, and locators and whatnot uh, curves, anything that can render in the viewport. And that's something you couldn't really do before with the icon renderer. So it's a nice new change. Um, again, that's just right here um, under the icon render settings. So one other thing I forgot to mention actually about the placement tool, when we're bringing in our props, let's say for instance I just bring in this box here and I'll just drop this into place. Actually, let's pull, pull back here. Oh, there we go. So when I bring these in, as I bring them in, I'm basically just positioning them and maintaining their orientation. So I've added just a simple switch um, for the drag tool. If you just click drag, you're moving the ground plane. Control drag, you're moving vertically. If you shift drag now, you can actually activate the spin tool, which basically just allows you to quickly rotate. So what that would allow me to do is just click drag, drop in an object, and then just hold shift to orient that object and then reposition it. Click drag, bring in another object, hold shift. I can kind of reorient or reposition that object as I need it and then drag and put that into place without ever having to deal with like standard rotate. Um, so this is of course a separate tool called the spin tool. The spin tool I added in the last version allows you to do exactly that. It also works with multiple objects so you can grab a bunch of objects, go into the spin tool and you can rotate them around a common bounding box. And one thing I did is I kind of recalibrated the the calculation for the spin. You may have noticed in previous in the previous release that it spun the objects really quickly depending on how big your scene was. So now it actually looks at the relative size of your objects and then calibrates that spin value accordingly. 
So if you hold control, by the way, you can spin around a specific object. If you hold shift, you can spin around the origin of each individual object. And again, by default, it will spin all the objects. So that's a separate tool, but then again, it's integrated into the drag tool. So I can click drag a bunch of objects around. If I hold shift, I can just quickly access my spin and then continue to click drag those around. So just real quickly want to go back and clarify one thing. I, I had mentioned there was an issue with saving paths. Well, that also applied to storing the path um, for shelf buttons. What this allows you to do is when you search for a path, you can basically go in and you can define any location in your file system to be a source directory for layout tools. Um, once you do that, you can also define a prefix. So right now I'm searching for props at a specific location. So I just save that to my shelf button and now I have a shelf button that will always go back to that prefix in that location. If I set this to objects for instance, I've added an update button which allows you to, you have to hit enter and then just click update and that will refresh all of your icons for that new location. So now I can basically store that and then I might have another one I've called elements and I'll hit enter and click update and now I've got a completely new set of objects and I'll store that to a shelf button. So I'm just showing this again. This was a 2011 feature but it was broken in 2012 uh, because of that path issue I mentioned. So this is now working again. So now I can just simply say that I want to switch over back to props at that location. I can access all of these objects. Um, then I can switch, oh my textures are gone, switch back over to objects and now I can access all of these objects and then I can just click this button and that will switch me back over into um, elements which will allow me to bring in this other object here. And again these are these are switching not only the prefix but also the actual location. Um, one benefit also is that now that you can scale this window is that you can cut and paste this this path much more easily. So this is actually a short path, but if I had a really long path on some external drive or something, um, you can cut and paste this uh, a lot more easily than you could before, just for reference. Um, and again, the other thing I mentioned before is um, we also have scalable sliders. I can actually just show this on an example. For instance, if you go into the display settings uh, and I wanted to access, for instance, the, the normal length on these guys, I'll just turn on my face normal display and I've got a slider now that allows me to adjust the normal length, but I can basically expand this window and now I get a very long slider which basically gives me a very, very precise control. Whereas before it used to be really, really small, now I can get this really precise control over my normal, normal length. And that's just one example. This applies to things like the grid size. Um, turn on my grid here. No. There it is. So I'll turn on my grid here, and if I want to get a really precise control over the size of the grid, I've got this nice long slider that gives me a very accurate control down to the very, very smallest size grid. And again, uh, these sliders kind of uh, are used in a variety of different places. So um, that wraps up uh, kind of the what's new. Um, oh, actually one other thing I forgot is in a in addition, I've also, of course, updated the layout tools um, documentation. So this is the beta version of 2012, hopefully soon to be the final release. I've put highlighted everything that's new in this documentation. You just get there from the help menu. But then I've also added a link to what I call the layout tools online resource, which will take you to the area and it will take you to a dedicated page called my layout tools resource page. And on this page, I'll be posting uh, tips and tricks and tutorials and various resources as well as updates and things like that for layout tools so that you can uh, kind of keep track of anything that, that's changing or, or uh, get uh, demos or videos about how to use certain features. Uh, and that uh, documentation and those updates are to come. So that wraps it up. Thanks. Bye.